My name is Dr. Kevin Pekka. I want to make a podcast that exposes people to the true miracles of life and health. All the guests on this show have been specially picked because they bring something positive to the world. They have some of the most amazing and inspiring life stories. These people have a passion for living, healing, and leaving the world better than they found it. There is something inside these people that made them keep fighting through all the tough times, even when people told them it was not possible. They carried on and made their lives beautiful again. And now they are sharing their experiences with the world. This is the Expect Miracles podcast. Enjoy the show. Today on the Expect Miracles podcast, we have one of my patients, Johnny Grande. Johnny has the most amazing comeback story of all time. He has been through hell and back. He never gives up. He's always striving to heal himself from all the trauma he's been through and been able to overcome. He's had multiple traumatic brain injuries. And he is such an inspiration to me because I've seen his recovery firsthand. The guy is a warrior. He's inspiration of hope. And it just goes to show you whatever you're going through in life, keep battling, keep fighting, find that silver lining and do whatever you can to get better. This story here today is why I created the podcast because it's just so inspirational. I really hope you guys enjoy this story as much as I do. If you like the podcast, please like it, share it, subscribe. We got more episodes on the way. Please welcome Johnny Grande. Today on the Expect Miracles podcast, we have Johnny Grande. Johnny has been a patient of mine for a couple of years now. His story is one of survival, hope, and never giving up. Johnny has one of the best recovery stories I have ever heard of, and it's something that I've been able to see firsthand. And every month I watch him continue to heal and become the best version of himself possible. One thing that stands out about Johnny is his, his mindset is unshakable. It's win or go home every day with Johnny. And even when he's having a bad day, it doesn't let him stop him from doing anything. He lives his life. He's on his way to a full recovery. And he's an inspiration to me. And that's why I wanted to share his story today. So please welcome Johnny Grande. Johnny, how are you today? I'm good, Kev. I'm glad I'd be on the show today. Absolutely, man. Dude, you have you have one of the most amazing stories from what you've told me briefly. And I'm watching it firsthand. I'm watching how much better you're getting each month. And I think there's a lot that goes into it. I think you're just not taking no for an answer. And your mindset is... It's, it's unbelievable how positive you are. And you're just seeking all the right treatments. So... Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on as well because it's really amazing of what you've, all the hell you've been through and how much of recovery you've been able to make. Yeah, it's a lot easier said than done. I know. I mean, when it first, when it first started, it was, it was an emotional roller coaster, but it's been three years since I did hit my head in 2017. And I might get emotional when I'm talking, but as you that's should, just how proud. It's, it's truly amazing how proud I am about myself as a person. You have to, you have to want to not take no for an answer to prove people wrong. When people say there's no way in hell that you'll go ahead and feel better or you'll do such a thing. I'm the kind of person, if you tell me no, I'm going to go ahead and prove you wrong a hundred times over and over again. So Johnny, let's uh, take us back to the day of your head injury what happened? Was it just a normal day when you woke up? Did anything feel off that day or was it just another day? So I had my own business at the time. I delivered soda and we, I had a truck that was like, had the roll up doors on the side. It was a normal day at like four in the morning. It was on with my day. We got to our first store at like 630. And I remember trying to get some 12 packs of soda off of the shelf from the top bin of one of the trucks. And I hit my head on the bottom of one of the, the metal shelves. And I remember when I hit my head, I felt really off. I mean, I've had that feeling before because I've had numerous concussions in my life. I also had a TBI in 2011 that I fully recovered from. That's but when the, I did that's hit the my softball head, story, right? Yeah, that's the one I hit, got hit with a softball in 2011. And I had Johnny, a, jump into I that had, story first because that was probably your biggest one, right? 
Yeah, that that one was to be honest with you, that one was more devastating in life than anything else, but it was probably the easiest one to get through compared to what I've been through since this newest one. But when I in 2011, I was playing in a softball league and I was sliding into second base, and uh, I tried breaking up a double play, and the and the ball hit off the right front of my head, and uh, I mean I got knocked out. My buddy slapped me around a couple times, and I woke up. I went to go walked to the bench and I fell over a couple of times and my buddies had to help me to the bench. And I'll never forget this. When I was sitting on the bench, I ended up falling asleep against the fence because the bench and the fence were so close together. And one of my friends, Michelle, went over to me and says, Johnny, and she kept screaming my name. And I remember it just faintly started getting lighter and lighter, her voice. And she like shook the cage and I woke up. She's like, get in my damn car. I'm taking it to the hospital because this doesn't look so good. So I go to the hospital and the right front of my head was swollen. It was probably coming off my head like two inches. They did a scan of my, my skull. I had a fractured skull and I had three quarters of my brain was full of blood. Oh. So then I got a helicopter to a trauma center. And then that's the start of that story. So you, you got helicoptered to the trauma center and didn't your friends make it to the hospital before you? Didn't it take a long time? Yeah. Yeah, they made it to the hospital before I, I did. And I got to the hospital in Trenton and they were all waiting for me. And I remember going in to the emergency room or where the trauma center and I spoke to the doctor. She says, well, you got some bleeding in your brain. So we just need to stand by to see if things get worse. Because once you start getting bleeding in your brain and it starts to fill up, there's a lot of things that can occur where you could lose function, lose hearing, lose mobility, lose eyesight. I mean, it's the brain. I mean, hell you can die. Yeah, literally you can die. So, so like a couple hours went by and they found out they did like four scans. I remember that. I'm like, really another one. She's like, yeah, like me to me, it was like just breaking an ankle, like not a big deal. I honestly didn't think it was a big deal. So she did the scan. She said, all right, well, now everything's stable in your brain. The blood's not moving around. So three quarter of it is it's soaked in blood. So what I want to do is you're going to stay here for a little bit for a couple of weeks. I think it was like two weeks and she sent me home. So I was in a hospital for like two weeks and she said everything's stable. So she said the blood's not moving anywhere in the brain than where it is. So she sent me home and I mean, I'm light duty, couldn't do any physical work. So then I seen her like a couple of days after in her office and she said, you could do two things. She said, we could let the blood and the, the juice stay in your brain and it can go away on its own. It could take like up to a year or longer, or I could just go in there and do what I got to do to make everything better. I asked her if she was my son, what would she do? She said she would, she would let me go in there and do what she has to do. So, I went into the surgery like the next morning and they took a piece of my skull out. They cleaned up what they needed to clean out, got all the blood out. They patched me back up and it was like a four or five, six hour surgery. They and put like a metal plate in your head too, right? Yeah. It's got like six or seven screws in my head. And so they, she did that. And I remember waking up out of surgery because I'm a really organized person and I remember filling out my disability papers for work and the nurse had them in her hand. And I remember saying, or I didn't even ask her how I felt or anything. I said, make sure you, the doctor fills out number 16 because they need to know how long I'll be out of work for. She started laughing and then she looked at me and she says, oh, you'd be fine. <laughs> and then it was pretty funny. And then like a couple of days went by, she started doing physical therapy, me, just like two steppers and like walking and speed walking. They knew everything was fine. So that lasted about a good 10 months of recovery and How being out of work. After surgery, did you feel pretty with it or were you feeling like... Oh, something? man. I was, I, when she was telling me to do like the step-ups, I was doing burpees. I was perfectly normal. Not one issue. Not one issue. That's good. Okay. Not one issue at all. A couple of months went by because the whole fracture, it cut one of my main arteries and veins outside of my skull and I had this aneurysm outside of my head that she needed to fix as well. So I had to go in for another surgery. 
so she burnt that artery in that vein. Well, so you, the, the, you almost died from that too, right? Didn't they tell you not? Didn't your whole head swell up, and you're like, something's very wrong here? And they said, no, no, just that was yeah. So what happened was, I went back to see the nurse, and I kept telling her, listen, I got this vein like popping out of my head, like an inch and a half. And she would always tell me, well, if you see these before and after pictures, you always had that. And I would always tell her no. So I got tired of it and I said, I need to see the doctor. And she said, well, she's in surgery right now. I said, well, what hospital? She told me the hospital and I went there and I waited until Dr. Benning got out of surgery. And she looked at me, she said, what the hell is that on your forehead? I said, this is what I've been trying to tell you that your nurses for the past month and a half. Jesus, that there's something a month and wrong. a half it was like that? Yeah. She said, thank God you came and seen me and I'm going to talk to those nurses and they're going to have my perspective on things. She said, thank God you came in and seen what was going on. So I really didn't think like this whole skull fracture and this aneurysm was a big deal until about a year and a half, two years went by when I was watching 60 Minutes and that actor from the movie Taken, his wife was in a ski accident and hit a mm -hmm. pine tree and she had bleeding in her brain and she died instantaneously. Dude, I'm telling you, I think what you went through would have taken most people out. Like, I don't think a lot of people would have survived from that. I totally agree from like hearing the 60 minute story in Dr. Benning. And she told me this numerous times. I've always been in great shape in my life, like taking care of my body and like eating good and doing CrossFit and like cut mutters and like Spartan races. She said, Johnny, if you weren't in such good shape, it would be a different story. And I'll be probably having to talk to your family about. Yeah. So that was that. That that road was ended. I was great after that. No big deal. It was like breaking an ankle. So you were good for about six or seven years after that. Yeah, up until the 2017 when I hit my head. How hard did you hit your head on the truck there? So I remember hitting my head and I felt off. I had to sit down for a couple minutes, and I'm like, I didn't get knocked out or nothing, but weird, awkward, like you just felt like dazed. Yeah, my days, like I was on a boat, like my buddy's voice was like not as loud as it was. So like being in high school and having concussions when it's not like really talked about until it has been now, like with football being like a big thing about it. I mean, it was probably, I hit my head and he's like, yo, you good? I said, yeah, I'm good. So like time went on, it was six in the morning. I had another 10, 11 hours to go on my in my route. So I worked through it. And I remember waking up the next morning with like one of the worst headaches I ever had in my life. And I went to work and that's when like the whole story starts with everything. So you woke up the next day, you went to work. Where does it go from there? So I went to work, headache, pressure, really bad. Like even like, like I work in the prison. So even looking at like the jail bars, I do get really dizzy because they're so close together and it's a lot of it's like really optic. So like pressure where I want to like slam my head on the ground to like, to get like a balloon, like to, to spew wow. it out. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, my ears would hurt. My ears were killing me. Like the inside of my radio was really bad. The ringing was loud. So I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. So I like, I need to start looking for doctors to get some help. Like, it went on for like a couple of weeks and I just started getting worse and to myself thinking that I could just fix this on my own. And it really wasn't the way I thought it was going to be that I actually needed somebody to go try to guide me in the right direction. And that's when I started looking for doctors and things like that. So you went the traditional medical route. You probably saw a couple neurologists and everything, right? Yeah. I seen three. It started with me seeing and your doctors, I've seen four of them. So you saw four ENTs? Yes, uh, four ear doctors. So I went and I thought that, like, Johnny, there's nothing wrong with your ears at all. There's nothing at all. I mean, and I got, I was getting so frustrated that I was screaming at him, like, there's something going on. Yeah. Well, I was like, I need to see your boss. And the boss would come in and, like, Johnny, there's nothing wrong. If you were just someone walking in the streets, then there would be nothing that I could tell them besides tell them there's nothing wrong with you. And that's that route. So then I got frustrated and I was like, let me go and see ear doctor. So I went to go see my ear doctor. I've known for a long time. 
he said, well, I don't know why your ears are cl- your ears clogged and you got this ring. So why don't you start by just trying to pop your ears for a couple weeks by holding your nose and just blowing. Oh, so geez. like, I'm like, all right. I said, you think this is going to fix me? He says, well, if you want the pressure to go away, that's one way for it to go away. I did that for a while. He gave me some medications, some steroids to try to break the cycle. It didn't do anything. Diuretics, he thought there was fluid in my ear. It didn't do nothing at all. So then I went to go see my neurologist who I went, my neurosurgeon who did the brain surgery in 2011. And she evaluated me and she said, John, you have post-concussion syndrome. I said, well, thank you. At least I got an answer. Now I get to work. Like I can go to therapy, fix myself. So I was in, so I went to Kessler and I was doing therapy for like eight months with them, the treadmill test, all kinds of stuff where like even like they did therapies where I'd sit in a room with a disco ball and when a red light would go on, I would throw up in a bucket because the red lights would trigger something. Jeez. I get really nauseous or yeah. Or even like she would put like YouTube videos on where like somebody's riding a bicycle in the city with a lot of like activity going on. People walking, honking horns, visualization, all kinds of stuff. I get really nauseous and want to throw up. It was really bad where like, the first time I went to see them and they did the evaluation on me, she did like a finger test where you bring like your finger like as close as you can to your nose. Mm-hmm. And she's like, when, when you see double vision, you let me know. So I started with my whole arm out and it was already double vision. So she knew it was really bad. So I worked with her for a long time and I seen all kinds of doctors. So then she wanted me to go and see this neuro eye doctor. I don't know the name. Neuro optometrist probably. Yeah. Yeah. He was Dr. Roth. He was so helpful. He did something called vision therapy with him. He did some tests. He diagnosed me with binocular vision dysfunction where my two eyes were working together because of the concussion. So I had another like eight, nine months of therapy with him and working hard every day to get better. My eyes are working together now. So I don't have to worry about that therapy or any concussion therapy. But the problem I was having when I was at Kessler still, I would always still feel like I'm on a boat and my like ear would ring and I feel very off. My neck would kill me like stiffness in my, my neck. And she's like, well, I don't know what to tell you, but maybe go back and find a near doctor that, like a, a neuro ear doctor. I don't know the name of that guy, that physician is, but I went to see this guy and he said, I did some tests, some real hardcore tests, like sitting in a rotational chair, standing on something and like the background's moving. It was like four hours of testing and come out to a conclusion where he said, I have a small tear inside of my right inner ear that you can't see on any scans or anything just from his perspective of knowing on what's going on from doing it a long time. He said, I had paramount fistula, which is a tear inside the inner ear that he needs to fix with cartilage from my ear that he would place inside my inner ear so that there would be no hole. So I wouldn't feel like I'm on a boat or like pressure in my ear or ringing. So long story short with that guy, that didn't do anything for me. So you got another, you got surgery to put the cartilage on your outer ear in the inner ear to fix that tear. Yeah, it didn't do absolutely nothing. So I said, went back to see him a couple months later. I said, doc, this shit didn't do anything. He said, well, I got to do another surgery. I said, excuse me. He says, well, I want to take a inner, uh, inside your inner ear. You got like these three little rings. He says, well, I got to take one of them out so that the fluid can go out. I said, you ain't touching me again. You gave me the, you guaranteed I'd feel right after this. So that I went and got another opinion. I went to Mass Eye in Boston. It's like the best ENT facility in the whole United States. And I seen a group of like eight doctors and they wanted to hear my story. And I told it to them. I seen Dr. Abdul Aziz. She's absolutely amazing. Thank God I went to see her because if she wasn't keeping it real with me, like you're keeping it real with me, I don't know what I would have done. She said, Johnny, I want to let you know right now, I had, I had like five 
radiologist look at all your scans and all your paperwork. There is no way you had a paranormal fistula. She said the 15 years she's been there and the tens of thousands of surgeries all those doctors done, that surgery was only done one time. Oh my gosh. Of how, how many patients did that woman see? 10,000, you said? At, like There's probably eight or nine doctors in that whole floor. She said out of the 10 to 20,000 surgeries they've done over the past 10 years, it's only been done one time. Oh my God. So she says, you got to do me a favor. You need to stop seeing that guy and trust what I'm about to tell you. And I, th- I told her about, said, I want you to do three things. I want you to go start talking to somebody. I want you to do what you think is right for you. She says, we will get through this together. Mm-hmm. When somebody says we will get through this together and not trying to pass you around, yeah. like that's like more powerful than any kind of drug, medicine, surgery that anything could do. I 100% agree with you. So she said, do those things. And I told her about seeing you and how much it's helping me. And I told her about like neurologist, Dr. Benning and all these therapies that I've been doing. I did acupuncture that did nothing for me. And then there's been so much things, Kev, I can't even, I just forget. It's probably been two or three dozen doctors I've seen since this thing whole started. And I'm in a better place now. Like when it was really bad, like even my jaw was really bad. Like even chewing food, I would feel nauseous after I chewed pizza or like a steak and I'd get this click in my jaw. And I had a, a jaw surgery, orthoscopy to get that cleaned out, which definitely helped. Every, when I did hit my head in the, the 2017, I always had uh, like grinding and clitching when I slept that night. And uh, it's just gotten drastically worse. I grinded through three mouth guards. And I'm on a new mouth guard now that I've been on for the past month. And Dr. Hare has been great with that, trying to help me with that and the facial pain that I deal with, with the tingling. And honestly, the mouth guard is definitely helping. Johnny, what does the upper cervical chiropractic help you with? So like the symptoms that occur that I have on a daily basis are the ringing in the right ear, the stiffness in the right side of my neck, the jaw tightness, like feeling on a boat, like my face tingling all the time, lower back pain. Just like this, when when I'm I'm out, Kev, I feel like like it's taken over me. Like I feel so out of it. I just want to be to myself. I get nauseous. Mm-hmm. But when I'm in, oh man, I feel like a normal person. Like the trees are HD. They look great. The leaves are great. I get the tingling in my face when I'm in still, but it just tells me that it's like things igniting, like the blood flowing where it's supposed to. Uh, my vision's a lot better. The lower back pain's not there. The stiffness on my neck is gone. The ringing in my right ear is so less to a point if I'm in place for a week or two, three weeks, I don't even know it's there. I mean, you checked me yesterday and I've been in a week and the first two days, I don't even, after the first two days like goes by, I don't even think about like being in or out anymore because I just feel like a normal person. That is, that's truly amazing. I remember your first adjustment the first day I met you. It was, it was a really a powerful adjustment. Do you remember that one? It was almost immediate. Yeah, that was, that was like really powerful. It gets me emotional because I know like, I know everybody knows their body the best. Nobody could tell you what's right or what's wrong or how you're feeling because I'm not trying to lie to nobody. Like, I don't want to be at a work. I don't want to not do things in life. I, I got shit to do. We got lives to live. I got three dogs. I'm going to play with them. I got a wife that I love with my whole heart. And thank God she's been around for the past couple of years with me dealing with all this stuff, her support. I can't even thinking about if she wasn't around, like where I would be because without her, I wouldn't know what to do. But when I did have that first adjustment, we were looking up at you. I said, what the frick? <laughs> I said, that tree looks so green, bro. And you started laughing. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt like, like I was, you told me to chill for like a couple minutes and then you rested me in the room for like 20 minutes, a half hour. And I just felt like my whole body was like being like 
energized. Like my whole body started tingling, my toes, my hands, my whole face, like my eyeballs, my ears. It's like an experience that I can't even describe until someone that you treat knows what I'm talking about can only mm. describe it. <sighs> yeah, man, that was um, it was good to see you respond that well, and that was probably two years ago. And since that yeah. day, I don't know if I mean it's kind of like seeing somebody every day. You can't see the little changes, but like from where my perspective is, and seeing you now, you're a completely different person. You are you're oh, so, yeah. you're so much better than where you were two years ago. I saw that video of you putting up weight at the gym. Like, dude, like you're doing some amazing things that you probably didn't think were possible two years ago. It's not that I don't didn't think they were possible. I know they were possible because I believe in myself and how I'm as a person. Like I got like I said before, I have things that I gotta do and I still got more than half of my life to live. And it used to stop me, like if I'd be like out of line because I can tell instantaneously when I am, but it's like, we have it. We have eight hours to do at work and we still have 16 hours to live throughout the day. So me not being able to do what I want to do as a person, a, you get really bad anxiety and get depressed, which I've been through. And plus when you have all these other doctors telling you there's nothing wrong with you, mm -hmm. if you don't have depression, anxiety from that, yeah, there is something wrong as a person. And like, I don't deal with any of that crap anymore. Like I told myself, I have one goal is if I can get myself back to the gym, I will fix myself. And I mean, I have a great gym at the house that I work at and I, my whole basement's full of equipment. And I told myself I had a resolution this year. It was to feel a hundred times better than I did last year and to start work out and put up weight. And I'm doing that because I'm not stopping no more for nobody. Johnny, what is, uh, I mean, so this has been like, you've been through absolute hell and back with this and I know most of it's been bad, but can you just talk about some of the positives from it? Like going through such a traumatic experience and to where you're at now, is there some light at the end of the tunnel that you've seen? Has it changed your outlook of how you look at life now? It changed a lot. You as a person, like in life, everybody's going to have like the dumps. If you don't go through a section in your life where you're at the worst of the worst, and I've been through that countless times, and and you get out of it and you just accomplish more than what's expected for yourself, you grow and you feel so much better as a person. There's no gratification. You don't need any gratification from nobody. It's just you as a person feeling better about you. So like me, with the whole aspect of like, where I was three years ago and going through that whole battle of just trying to find out what was wrong with me. And we know what the issue is now. I me knowing and me accepting that is very powerful. You need to accept it. Listen, I'll never, I'm not going to be a hundred percent like I was three years ago, but if I could be 80, 85%, I'm good with that because I'll manage and I'll maintain at the end of the day, like getting started with things is always the hardest part. And a lot of people would just give up. But I'm not that kind of person who gives it up because we have things we got to do. Johnny, what makes at some of those darkest moments where you could have easily just given up and said, you know what, fuck this, this is my life now. What made you keep searching and pushing to get to that next level? What was that? Just like I knew there was something going on. Like this is not normal. Yeah. Like not normal as a person, just me as a person, just not being normal. Like I'm so used to working so many hours a day and just doing doubles and just like, like living and enjoying myself, like walking into a room and being like the center of attention where like you could feel the good energy from people. It was to a point like, where like, I didn't even want to go out with people or like socialize with the immediate family. But it like the turning point was with me, like seeing people not want to be around me no more because I was so there with things. And just me just not being the humble person that I am and the person with the good vibes. And I said, you know what? At the end of the day, we got to do something different. And me, me, me crying in the corner is not helping me or helping my relationship with my wife or me not playing with the dogs. I got to do something that's going to be greatly changing that. And so that's when I told myself this year is the year where 
we make things happen. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. John, do you have any advice for anybody that is going through those dark times, those, those injuries where the doctors are telling you, you you're going to have to live with this forever. There's no hope. Do you have anything you'd like to share with those people? Because there are a good amount of people with those injuries out there that still think there's no hope. And it's always good to get the message out to them as well. Yeah. To was a point like where it was so bad. Like, like I, I just want to run away. Like not be here no more, mm-hmm. but you can't, like if you're feeling that way and you know, that's not you, you need to go and speak to somebody because you're just building stuff up inside that you don't need to hold in. You getting your voice out and just speak to somebody, they could also guide you in the right direction. But my advice for people is if you feel a certain way and you know something's not right about you, don't fucking give up. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're the only person in control of yourself. No matter how many family members, best friends you got, people around you that are supporting at the end of the day, you are the only person who needs to go out about to try to find what's wrong with you. So do whatever it takes and don't give up because I'm 36 years old now and I got more than half of my life left. And I remember how good it was prior to this and how much better it is getting telling myself I'm not allowing it to take over me no more because I want to go on vacation. I want to go to gym. I want to do tough mutters. I want to go ahead and maybe get my master's or my PhD and stuff. And there's more to life than just sitting in a corner or sitting up in bed until one o'clock and going to work at two and just doing it over and over again. And that's not going to help. If you're feeling a certain way and you know, it's not how you are as a person, go and talk to somebody. There's always by someone that is willing to listen and guide you in the right direction. Absolutely. And yeah, John, like I was saying before, your story is incredibly inspirational and I don't think it would be, it wouldn't be half as inspirational unless you took it upon yourself to pull yourself up and the will to get better, take no for an answer, not take no for an answer and just, just heal yourself because I think it starts with you and your mindset. And you did this, man. Like you, a lot of, first of all, I think a lot of people might've passed away from that head injury you first had. You made it through that and you just, you just continue to keep pushing and not take no for an answer and just live that life you want to live. And that's just most impressive. And, and it's not like I'm meeting you for the first time. I'm, it's even more inspirational for me to even see. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it was good because when I, I remember when I was going through all of these like doctors and I was just like one day on Google, like looking at like weird shit, like holistic medicine and, or like chiropractic body medicine and things like that. And I came about your page. I guess it might've been some keywords where it said like athletes went through experiences like I went through and everything you had on your page. I mean, I could add maybe one thing and it was exactly the same. I said, I need to go see this guy Mm -hmm. because he knows what the hell I've been through because you've been through it yourself. And then that's when I said, all right, let's go set up an appointment. And then I went to see you and, and we're taking it from there, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been there too, where you, you sit down with all these brilliant people and their fancy degrees and you just want somebody to meet you on your level just to listen. And some of them don't even listen to you. Some people think there's nothing wrong with you. And some of the doctors uh, say, you know what, you're going to have to live with this for the rest of your life and there's no hope. Yes. And that alone exactly. can put you in a mental ditch. Exactly. And yeah, listen, I know I'm going to live with something things for the rest of my life, but If I had a hundred things in the beginning and I got 20 of them left, I'm good with 80%, bro. Yeah. Because I'll make up that other 20% with me working hard to get even better as every day goes by. Yeah, Johnny, it's, it's truly amazing to see. And at the end of every show, I like, I like to ask all my guests, what is one piece of advice that really resonates with you that you would like to gift the audience? It could be absolutely anything. I always say this to all my friends and it's advice that I probably told you. It might've not even been advice. It just, 
might as well me just be saying it. But just getting started is always the hardest part. But if you don't know how to get started, go and reach out to somebody so they can help you through it. Because I went and I reached out, psychologist, someone I spoke to, Diane, she's a sweetheart. And she helped me guide me through this whole craziness that I've been through with my health. Getting started is always the hardest part. And moving forward, it's going to get a lot better as the days go by, I promise. I'm a living example of it. I mean, we still battle every day, but I'm definitely a lot better than I was prior to this. And I, I appreciate Dr. Kevin and all the stuff that you've done for me as a person. You just let me vent and just talk, and because you keep things real and straightforward, and I'm the same kind of person. Like, I'm brought and spoke to everybody. If you, you could take it as you want to take it. Love that, Johnny. Johnny, thanks for coming on, laying all the cards out on the table and sharing your story and being just real and authentic. I really appreciate those stories the most. Thanks, Kev. I appreciate you, buddy. Absolutely. All right, Johnny. I will see you soon. Thank you so much for coming on, brother. Anytime. Anytime. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a review. It really helps boost the podcast and spread the good word. My chiropractic practice is located in West Orange, New Jersey at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. You can also find us on Facebook at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. All of my information is on my website at drkevinpecka.com, drkevinpecka.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dr. Kevin Pecka for podcast episodes, patient testimonials, and educational videos. I have daily affirmations and inspirational quotes on Instagram at Easel Affirmations, E-A-S-E-L Affirmations. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at drkevinpecka at gmail.com, drkevinpecka at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Cheers.